Good morning, everyone. It's Glenn Calloway coming to you from the basement. It's Friday morning. It is the start of the baseball playoffs today at 1 o'clock. There's like four games on today. I couldn't be more excited. Jays come on at 4 o'clock against the Seattle Mariners. So, uh, But I wanted to do a video this morning uh, talking about a couple of artists that I am spending a lot of time listening to. Um, XTC and Kurt Vile. So uh, let's start with XTC. I, uh, I'm trying to think of how I got into this band originally. I think I saw that documentary. There's a, there was a documentary that was playing on um, one of the, cha the streaming channels. This is Pop, XTC. It really intrigued me and I really never paid much attention to the band before that. Um, I bought uh drums and wires and liked it a little bit i mean i just you know it it, it wasn't my bag you know but but um larry graves he lent me on our cd exchange the black sea and i listened to this because i had to review it and let's do it like about five times and I absolutely fell in love with it and then i became a fan and i started to get all kinds of stuff so i want to talk about the band a little bit for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, the main guys are Andy Partridge and Colin Moulding. Um, they, they formed a band in 1972, and it wasn't until 75 they became XTC, but they were kind of uh, hanging out in the punk new wave scene. In 77, they signed with Virgin Records, but it wasn't until 79, that's, that's, that's seven long years of uh, hard slugging, that they uh, had a hit single, which was Making Plans for Nigel. Um, between 79 and 1992, they released 10 albums and had six singles that charted. Uh, in between that time, they also took the time to come up with a uh, kind of a band that paid tribute to 60s psychedelia uh, called Dukes of Stratosphere. Um, I have that uh, album and didn't bring it over here, so I'm not showing it, but I'll talk about it. So uh, let me show you what I do have on CD and on vinyl. First of all, Stephen Wilson was doing a ton of uh, remixes on these, and I have a couple of them, and I'm dying to get the rest. So, uh, And I do have some holes in my collection, so um, you can let me know if you're watching this video and you're an XTC fan where I should go next, because, um, you know, like I say, there's 12 albums and I have like a half a dozen of them or something. So, 1979, let's start with Drums and Wires. I have this on uh, vinyl and on CD. Uh, Virgin label, green on one side, and the other. Um, here is the Stephen Wilson mix. Fantastic, sounds great. Great packaging, excellent. Comes with a DVD. Uh, audio disc and a uh, CD um, booklet, kind of telling the whole story of everything. Uh, this is comes with a 2014 5.1 mix, 2014 stereo mixes, the original master, original album extra tracks, and DJM stereo mixes. There's the band. Um, I'm just looking at the song lineup here. I never wear my glasses. Making Plans for Nigel kicks off the album. That is just a catchiest tune. They're a very catchy band. I, I, how do you describe them? It's kind of new wave-ish, I guess. I don't know. They have a, they have a really distinct sound. Um, that's definitely a favorite of mine on this album, but the whole album is awesome. So that is Drums and Wires, released in 1979. 1980, we get the one I talked about that blew me away, The Black Sea. I, uh, Larry gave this to me. I had it for a week and then uh, took it back. And then, then the next day, I was in uh, Zap Records in Coburg, Ontario, and he had a used copy for 10 bucks, And I picked it up and uh, just real happy I got it. Again, the Virgin label. Inner sleeve with all the lyrics. 
And once again, I also have the Stephen Wilson mix, which Larry, my good friend Larry Graves, gifted me. So how's that? Because he said he wasn't listening to it anymore and he knew how much I liked it. So that's, uh, that's a buddy. There it is there. Again, double disc. And includes, oh, they're not going to tell you, are they? No, they're not going to tell me what it includes. Maybe on the back. Okay, CD1, new stereo edition mixed and produced by Stephen Wilson from the original multi-track tapes. There's a Blu-ray, uh, 5.1 surround sound in 2017 stereo editions mixed and produced by Stephen Williams from the original multi-track tapes. 2001 Stereo Remaster by John, by Ian Cooper at Metropolis Mastering. Blu-ray Blu authored and CD master prepared by Neil Wilkes at Opus Productions. Just a great, great record. I love this album. It's uh, There's a song on here that's really uh, percussion driven called... Uh, Living through another Cuba, I just, I can't, I mean, you just, the rhythms, man, you just, you can't stop. You're just like driving along, listening to it, and I'm patting on the dashboard, and driving with my knees, and doing the drum fills. Awesome, awesome album. Um, if you're not into XTC, I, I don't know, I, I, this is the one I like the most, so. Um, there we go. So what else have we got here? After that, it's an album called English Settlement, which I just started listening to recently. I really wasn't giving it much of a chance because I was really just always listening to Drums and Wires and, uh, and the Black Sea. And uh, I listened to this over the last few days, and it is great. It might, it, it's moving up there in my uh, ranking for XTC albums. Uh, English Settlement's great great songs on this it has this uh, another hit record of theirs called senses working overtime which is just again just an infectious song um jason and the argonauts i really love no thugs in our house uh just that excellent album english settlement if if this is in a, a stephen wilson remixed uh, anniversary set i'm definitely going to grab it uh, after English Settlement, 1993, an album called Mummer, which I'm not even going to talk about because I have not, I bought it, listened to it once, and put it on the shelf, and I haven't pulled it back out yet, so it's going to be sitting on my CD player today because I've got to give it an opportunity, but Mummer, you can let me know how you feel about that one, and uh, next was the Dukes of Stratosphere album that they released again. It's, uh, if you like um, 60s psychedelic music, but not, not like San Francisco psychedelic music. I'm talking about pop music of, of the 60s. Uh, Ichiku Park, uh, songs like that. And uh, they just did a great job. They're all, the songs are very poppy, but they have a very 60s sound, a psychedelic sound. It's excellent, excellent. You can get like a comp CD and you can get the albums independently, but it's Dukes of Stratosphere. Check them out. Next is an album in 1986 that I do not have called Skylarking. I've been told on a couple of occasions that I need to get that, and I will. And then the last album is uh, not that one. I thought I had it on album, but I guess not. It's Oranges and Lemons. This was released in 1989. That's the last one I have in my collection. Again, I haven't given this many listens. This was actually the first XTC album that I bought. Um, just on spec. And again, I wasn't really into the band that much. So um, I haven't really listened to it as much as I should. So I don't want to comment. But there we go. XTC, turning into one of my favorite bands. Absolutely love them. I want to fill up my discography eventually. Um, next, a very quirky artist by the name of Kurt Vile. I don't know if you guys are into Kurt Vile. I made some notes here, so bear with me for a second. Uh, Kurt Vile was born in 1980, so he's, uh, you know, he's 42 years old. Um, former lead guitarist with War on Drugs, who are somewhat of a popular uh, alt rock band. Um, he was there for a while and left. 
uh, very influenced by Neil Young, John Prine lyrically, uh, and John Fahey. Um, he signed with Matador Records in 2009 and released his third album then. The other two albums that he released previously are independent records, and I'm not sure, but the first album on a, I guess, a major label or a label of some kind is Childish Prodigy. Now, I would describe Kurt Vile as folk rock, Americana, alt rock. Somewhere in that vein he falls in. Um, he's got a really lazy kind of uh, voice, like it's almost like Lou Reed with, uh, um, I don't know, a bit of an accent and a bit of uh, maybe smoke one too many dubs before he recorded. Um, so Childish Prodigy is his first album on major label, actually his third record. In 2000, that was released in 2011. In 2013, Smoke Ring for My Halo. He has a band called The Violators. Um, And all the lyrics and everything are on here. Uh, what else we got going? There's Kurt there. So the next album he released after this one is one I absolutely love. It's a collaboration with another very quirky artist. Um, actually, uh, walk smoke. I'm sorry, I missed this one. Walking on a pretty days. You can tell by his covers and everything. He's got a, a kind of a sense of humor and uh, quirky lyrics, quirky vocals. Uh, really good guitar player. Yes, now the next one was a collaboration in 2017. I bought, this is where I discovered Kurt Vile because I was a fan of Courtney Barnett from Australia, singer-songwriter from, uh, I bought her debut album and absolutely loved it. Again, very quirky. She's kind of like the female equivalent of Kurt Vile in a way because the quirky lyrics and kind of funny, kind of, uh, you know, uh, I, it's just hard to describe. You know, they could do a song about a toaster and they, they you know, they just pick any subject and make a, a song out of it. They decide to do a collaborative uh, album. Courtney was in Australia, Kurt was in uh, North America, and I think they exchanged tapes back and forth and ended up with this album called Lotta Sea Life. It's, it's a fun album. All the lyrics are there. Again, very quirky. Uh, they just, it's just, it's kind of like you're sitting in your room and, and you just come up, start talking about what you're doing. Like for instance, on the first song it says, when I'm all alone, on my own, on my lonesome, and there ain't a single another soul around. I want to dig into my guitar, bend a blues riff that hangs over everything. And when I'm by myself and it's daytime because down under or wherever it is I live, when it's evening, you know I speed read the morning news and come up with my own little song also too. It's just like, it's, but you hear them sing and it's kind of cool. Anyway, um, Courtney Barnett is another great artist if uh, you want to check her out as well as Kurt Vile. Uh, next, after a lot of sea lice, was an album called Bottle It In, 
which was probably my favorite Kurt Vile album uh, up until uh, one I'm going to talk about in a minute. Then, in 2022, in April of this year, he puts out this album, Watch My Moves. I absolutely love this album. It's so relaxed. The first song, he's just sitting there, he plays a the piano, him singing, and he's singing about, uh, oh, how much fun it would be to tour with Neil Young, and, uh, and uh, that would be fun, and it's just, it's, it's, it's just fun and relaxed. And the album, there's a lot of really good guitar in here. It's a very spacious record. It's very laid back. You can't get more relaxed than this. I mean, you, you're, you're probably going to fall asleep listening to it. One critic said it's majestically mellow zoned out it's a majestically mellow zone out session <laughs> which i think describes it perfectly <laughs> again the lyrics are very or the vocal style is very lou reedish but with a bit more of a stoner sound to it uh again like folk rock americana alt rock this is uh up for album of the year for me i am undecided it's between this um, the latest Jack White album, Entering Heaven Alive, uh, and uh, John Mellencamp's One-Eyed Jack, and the Tedeschi Trucks' I Am the Moon project. But this one is like really got me thinking. I love this record. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend both artists, XTC, Kurt Vile. Check them out. Have a great day. Go Jays, please press the like button, please subscribe, and have a great, in Canada, Thanksgiving weekend.